So on the last video, we talked about population ecology and the idea of the fluctuating measure that's called population density, and that it's important to study populations together with other populations that may interact with that one, the concept of metapopulation. But you may wonder, how is it that ecologists even count how many people are living in a certain place or how many animals are living in a certain ecosystem? That's actually very challenging and more challenging than you can possibly imagine. Imagine trying to count the butterflies that you see in this picture, or the antelopes that you see in the road on the right, or the birds that are flying away, or the people in that street that you see. It's very hard for ecologists to actually count every single organism that lives in the ecosystem. So there's got to be a way to estimate, sometimes, the number of organisms living. And I'm going to talk about a couple ways that they actually do that. The first way is called the grid method, or the plot average method of counting populations. And it basically works like this. You split the ecosystem in, in a grid, and you see that being done here on the soil, or you can also be, see the lady doing it over here, and in the macro scale you can see the guys doing it over here in the forest. So they were literally do this. So if you want to find out how many, how many organisms are living, they will split the ecosystem in a grid. So look at the top left here, for example, and you see the grid that they did. So let's say that you have 29 grids, which they have over here. Now you randomly then are going to select some of these grids. You use a computer program or, or just get numbers out of the hat or something to actually select, let's say, six out of these grids. So this, you get this one, and you get that one, and you get this one, and you get that one, and this one. Now I didn't pick these. It was randomly selected for for. Uh, this case. So that means that these six grids were totally, totally random, right? So now I'm going to go about and count each of those grids, how many organisms are living in it. Now that's going to be a lot easier than counting the number of organisms living in the entire ecosystem. In fact, it would be very hard considering the fact that they would probably be moving around in most cases between one grid and the other, which will make it even more challenging for the thing to happen. But if you do this and you do it fast, you can probably get a good estimate for the number of organisms living in each one of the smaller grids that you, that you did. So let's say that you actually did count that and you found that there were about, let's say, six over here. And then on this one, there were four. On this one, there were eight. This one had four again. This one had five. And this one had five. So now when you look at that, you will see that there were 10, 18, uh, 26 and then 32 organisms living in this six, between the six grids that we counted. So, so the next step is then to get the average number of organisms living in the grid among the grids that you counted. So let's say if I had 32 organisms and I counted six grids, that means that on average 5.3 organisms will be found in each of the grids. Now. Once I have this average, I can then multiply it by the number of grids that I have. So in this case, I had 29 grids, right? So if I get 5.3 and multiply that by 29, I'll find out that on average, there's going to be 155 estimated number of people in this grid or organisms in this grid. So what this is telling us then is there's an easier way to count the whole rather than counting the whole of it. You can just split the whole into pieces count a few of the pieces that you randomly choose, get the average number of, of organisms among those pieces, and multiply by the number of pieces that you have. And we're going to do a lab in class to, sh to show this, but if when you do this, you basically get an estimate for the population. But there are limitations to this method, because what if the population was clumped? And we're going to talk about that in the next video. But if you have a number of people are all gathered around the same place over here, and everybody's clumped on that corner, Chances are that if you randomly select uh, the, the grids, you're going to think there's a lot less than there actually is because all of these will be zero. And so you're going to think the population number is a lot smaller than it actually is. And it's not necessarily going to be that small. It may be just that they're all clumped in one corner. And that's going to be a limitation to using the grid method. So they also have to have another way of doing it. The second way that they do it is called the capture recapture or the mark recapture uh, method of doing this. And you may have seen this in TV before, but basically what they will do is that they will get the organisms, they will go to the, or the ecosystem and they will capture some of these organisms and then they will mark them. They will tattoo on them, they will write on them, or they will put a tag on them, or they will attach something to it. Sometimes they even use GPS chips so they can track the way the animals are actually moving within the ecosystem. Um, or sometimes they will actually uh, inject the, this is a new way of doing it, 
inject the organism with a radioactive isotope so that if when you recapture you can see that he's already been tagged whichever way you do it you're going to go there and you're going to capture as many as you can then you're going to give it some time so that these animals can redistribute themselves among the ecosystem and under the assumption that now they're evenly distributed just like before and that there hasn't been a massive change in the population since the last time you went you can use that, that to estimate the total number of people that live because the idea is that when you try to catch them again obviously you're going to get some which are going to be the same ones you already caught but you also may get some which were not caught yet so looking at the ratio of the numbers that you caught versus the numbers which haven't been caught yet you can kind of figure out how many are going to be in your total population so the principle is like this if you capture animals the first time and then the second time you go a lot of the same ones get captured that means that the population that's out there is probably very small because you're capturing all the same ones every time so the chances are the population is small but if the second time you capture them you rarely ever get ones that were already tagged chances are that the population is very large because it's, the chances are small of you recapturing the same ones so that means the ratios between the, these things can actually help you determine an estimation for the total population they actually look at it like this the numbers are standing for the number that you uh, captured on the second time that were already captured the first time to so the ratio of numbers that you captured the first time should equate all right the number of uncaptured on the second time to the number of total people in the population so if you reorganize that you do a you know cross multiplication to solve for the number of people in the population because that's what you want for so you multiply by n on both sides and then you're going to multiply by m here and multiply by r over there you're going to get c m over r which is the same thing you see over here now, you don't really need to know this. I'm just trying to explain how they get to it. But basically, the idea is that to estimate the number of organisms in the population, you're going to get the number that you captured on the first time, multiply that by the number that you captured the second time that we did not actually have markings, and divide that by the number that you captured the second time that did have markings. So let's say that you captured 10 animals the first time total. And then on the second time, you capture 15 that were not marked and five, mark, five that were marked. Using this formula, you could estimate that the population number had about 30 organisms in this ecosystem. So this is how they do it, and it's called the Lincoln-Peterson model. And in fact, they've already actually adapted this model to become a little more accurate uh, by reducing the variance. And that's called the Schnabel bottle, but you don't have to live, know all this detail. But what, what I try to understand here is that by capturing and recapturing organisms and looking at the ratios on both times, you can determine and make an estimation of how many organisms are in the population. So it's very interesting. And they also have a lab about this in our class so that we can learn about it, how it, how it works. Now, now, the last thing you do to estimate the number of, of organisms in the population is look at the traces left by animals. Things like feces, like nests, and like markings from the animals. The more of these things you see in the wild, the more of the animal group is probably around. And so, sometimes you don't have to account the actual animals, you can just account the evidence that they leave behind. So, ecologists do a lot of different things to count the number of organisms that live in the ecosystem. They will use the grid method, the capture recapture method, and they will also look at indirect ways to ascertain the presence of organisms in the ecosystem. I hope you find this helpful. In the next video, we're going to be talking about population dispersion patterns. I'll see you guys then.